Hello dear subscribers and viewers of Phase 65 Basics. I welcome you again for this uh, moment to study something about 10 tactic, tactics or techniques or strategies that the devil or Satan uses to destroy Christians. The tactics, techniques, uh, strategies or ways that the devil uses to kill Christians spiritually to destroy Christians spiritually. So you need to understand these things. So I welcome you, just watch till the end, either you're old or young, these techniques, he has been using them most of the time, and many uh, Christians has failed to stand these tactics, or tactics, okay? So I welcome you now for the word of prayer to welcome the Holy Spirit, Father, we we'll come to you humbly. At this moment, I pray that you will give me the Holy Spirit to speak these words with wisdom, which is not humanly. The wisdom from above, which can touch human heart and prepare people to stand against the words of the devil. Father, Thank you because you have granted me the Holy Spirit and the wisdom. Because I pray in faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. So my friend, uh, welcome again. And the first, before going to this list of those uh, tactics, I want to tell you something. When you have accepted Jesus Christ, you have uh, means you have declared the war against the kingdom of the devil. When you are not on Satan's side, converted, becoming a Christian, and the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you are an enemy to the kingdom of darkness. So the, uh, the devil will make you the point of attack. It will sh show all arrows also, uh, towards you. So you need to know how, what tactic, ta techniques all tactics that he uses to destroy, especially Christians, people who have been born again, who are destroying the kingdom. The first one is pride. Is the pride. Satan uses pride or praise. For example, when we read the book of John, chapter 6, verse 15, when they wanted to make Jesus Christ a king, and Jesus Christ had to force his disciples to go to the boat. And then himself he departed and went to the mountain to pray. Because they wanted to, to lies his pride that he had. For example, if Jesus Christ has accepted that, means the plan of salvation could have failed from that moment. Praise. On this type of praise is maybe you are a Christian. And, people, and you have done something and people come to you and they say, wow, uh, there's no one like you. You are singing well. Maybe you are a singer. So you are singing well. Without you, this choir will not move forward because your voice is so sweet. And people praises you and it praises you. Sometimes be careful with the praises from human words. When people praises you, they are killing you. So you should try at the level best to avoid praises or accepting praises and letting them come to you. When a person praises you, it's better to say glory to God and then depart from that praise. Maybe the church, they are praising you, praising you. Try at your level best to cut short that story or their conversation concerning praising, praising you. Because the more they praise you, they are going to lift up your ego. Pride will start. And then the devil is going to crush you at the moment. When with the book of Luke chapter 11, verse 27 and 28, a woman in the crowd who cried, praising Jesus Christ, that blessed are the breast which suck you and whatever. Uh, and Jesus Christ said, blessed the person who hears the words of God and do them. 
So he, he changed the story from that moment. So avoid praise or pride. The second thing is prosperity and money. Satan uses prosperity and money. When we read the book of 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, Paul warning Timothy from the love of man that because of that, many as killed, they have, they have departed from faith. So we need to understand prosperity and money. Some people have it, but the devil pushes people with the, uh, with the doctrines of prosperity that it's better you mix this in your, in your, in your, in your sermons. If you use prosperity, be careful. People, yes, people have to prosper, okay? But Satan tried to use that way to make many fall, that they put down Jesus Christ and what they preach is about money, prosperity. This year is you warriors. You are going to succeed. You are going to get money. You are going to be rich for what? Does it mean that we don't have to tell people to work hard and make money? No, we have to tell them. Because once they make it, they have to give it for the work. Support work of God. So use prosperity and money. When you are focusing on money, everything is about money, then you are preparing your own fall. And the devil uses that technique. Okay? That's what we need to understand, friends. That's something which we need to, to understand. And some, the another step that, the another technique that Satan uses is adultery or fornication. He has used this to kill many Christians, especially young Christians. Fornication. How does he use it? A person may say, when you are a Christian, you are born again, you cannot commit adultery or fornication. Hey, the story of David, the soul of Samson gives us the picture. What Satan use, uh, does, he brings women uh, who are beautiful, very attractive, sensual that they know in a belief that by this you are not going to escape. And they are just free. You don't need to use a lot of energy to get them. And their target is not about anything they want. They just want to get you to sleep with you. And so once they do it, your spirituality is dead. You are on danger zone. You cannot remain the same after doing that. What about their church leaders? Pastors. This is for pastors. It doesn't matter what denomination, even SDA, no matter denomination. Pastors, Satan has killed them spiritually using adultery and fornication. So he knows how to use this tool effectively. Try to free fornication and adultery, my friend. You will not survive. If you don't avoid this technique, okay? The fourth one is negligence of prayer. The devil uses this technique. So sometimes the spirit tells you, this is the moment you need to pray. Just pray. And the devil comes and tells you, wait, you're going to pray at night. You have sinned and then you feel guilty because of the Holy Spirit, you have grieved the Holy Spirit and you feel that the grieving of the Holy Spirit but the devil comes to you and you whisper, you are going to pray at evening. My friend, you need to be at prayer all the time. The book of Luke chapter 22 verse 40, Jesus said, pray that you may not enter at all into temptation. That's according to Amplified Bible Version. Pray that you may not enter at all into temptation. So when we pray, mostly temptations are not going to come to us. One day I will, I will explain how prayers works in the matter of avoiding temptations. I will just, I'm going to I will tell it just like an only video. 
So subscribe and share this video so that you may get the, the, the video like that one. But the fifth one is being busy, no time for meditation. A person who is so working, no time for resting, no time for meditation. You are working from morning up to evening. You sleep, you wake up. When you get just five minutes, 10 minutes, that's time only you pray. But you're so busy. My friend, even if you are a pastor, you are doing a mission, you are preaching the gospel, you need to have the time to rest. If you don't do that, you are preparing yourself for the fall. Okay? You are preparing yourself for the fall. So my friend, we need to be careful with that. This is according to the book of uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 34. Satan uses the technique of making you more busy. Busy. It brings works and a lot of things, opportunities that you're moving here and there to make sure that you don't have the time to sit down and meditate upon the uh, and meditate and think and rest to make your mind calm. Number six, he uses fear. And this uses persecution, no employment, family disowning, examination, job, and all the things that come to destroy, to make you fear, get afraid, that how am I going to live? Then some people, they give up their faith and go to the witchcraft. Maybe you have missed the child. That how am I going to get a child? There's an opportunity to go to the witch doctor. And you're going to get it. Satan brings people. Because you are fighting. How are people going to see me? Then you, uh, you choose to do that. Examination. Some of the students. Examination are set of the Sabbath. The devil comes. You're going to miss school. Or just... Just do it in a single day. It won't bring a problem. You're going to repent later. That's a technique. Understand. Know it. If you know it, you're going to be safe, my friend. The other one is this one. The other one is that the seventh. Ignorance. No Bible study. People are not studying the Bible. They don't want to they yeah, lead a lot of books to understand because of the ignorance, Satan gets them where they are weak. For example, if you have read this, uh, you have understood what I've been teaching, there are maybe 10 points. What happens if Satan brings a woman and comes? Why this woman is coming so easy? Is there something fishy? So you can even detect that this is the technique. Maybe you want to pray, you feel like like you don't want to pray and so is it. this is the technique so you take a moment I'm going to pray even if I don't feel you are breaking the technique okay you face fear that's how you can use faith that why am I fighting let me have faith I believe in God strong be strong and courageous you take promises of God but ignorance of knowing the techniques of the devil is going to kill you so you need to understand the word of God According to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 17, and the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4, the word, the man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. So you need to, uh, to be wise. First, uh, the eighth technique is idleness. Sometimes you don't have the job, you don't have the work, you just sit down. Or just there, useless. You don't have something, you're not listening. You're just, because you don't have something to do. Idleness. Satan uses idleness to kill Christians' spirituality. The story of David, the second Samuel chapter 11 from verse 1. David did not go to war. He stayed there at his palace. And by that moment, the devil used the opportunity effectively. So the devil will tell you, you don't have to go anywhere. I don't know myself, I found the same thing that I was supposed to go to the mission. And so what happened? I, I, just, I just have to go. This is the old day, you know. I was at university by that moment. And this is the, 
this is the this is the whole day so i need to have a lesson i've been studying for the whole semester and so i had to go and find a lesson and the devil did it he did his work okay and it brought pain and my relationship with god was altered by that moment and for so long time and so my friend i want to tell you that you don't need to be idle find something be doing don't stay idle just maybe when you are sleeping or you are meditating and having the word of god but don't stay finding people are sitting they just doing stories and this is idle talks don't entertain that you're going to to fall into temptation so you need to be careful my friend okay the ninth technique social media the devil has been using social media to kill christians so you need to understand my friend that this is very important tiktok whatsapp instagram messenger that's facebook and a lot you know it okay you know them and so my friend what does these social medias because they have different contents and some many of them are shots you know shots kills your brain concentration and some have some demonic power so they drain your energy sometimes i'm sitting and watching you know they are good sometimes to watch and after watching i find that i've lost my energy like i'm not strong now so i have to find a time to start the bible to pray to listen to those spiritual meditation songs at uh, instruments at least to gain the power so i i find that the devil has used the med- uh, the social medias to kill christian spirituality so my friend you need to avoid using uh, social medias purposeless like you just have to just go there search for something that is very interesting you need to learn from it maybe sermons maybe vf videos no matter what presentations you can just use them but don't stay idle on their social media to watch photos and uh, just you're going to your spirituality is going to die okay the last one that the devil uses is this one he uses marriage marriage many strong people strong preachers pastors evangelists marriage has destroyed their spirituality they have become weak because of marriage this is not a matter of men even women the same you are very strong praying woman prayer warrior but after getting into marriage you are no longer a prayer warrior things has changed those men who used to preach the truth they had the power of god their words was very straight to the word of god they did not fear anybody but after entering into marriage things has changed the devil we bring a woman to make sure it is unsuited for you and once you join together if you are not uh, you are not alert to see the danger of that marriage you are going to die spiritually so my friend i just cancel you but what about maybe i just here i want to give a warning and still give an uh, and and a suggestion and the way out how to deal with it for those who have entered into marriages and once they compare their previous life experience with god and now it seems to be different what to do i'm going to give a little counsel on how what to do but you can read the book of judges the issue samson it was a marriage that killed his spirituality and departed from god second kings the book, second kings 11 verse 4 the issue of uh, of king solomon marriage but what to do it's easy though it's hard you must know that your spirituality depends upon you alone so you must understand this is the mistake don't tell your wife or your husband that i find that you have killed my spirituality no you are declaring second world war if not third world war 
So don't tell her that you are the reason. No. Just you have understood that this is a problem. And so what you need to do, you need to have more time to have separate prayers yourself. Dead, just have personal prayer. Try to find God yourself. Sometimes you may have like when you are going somewhere, just you need to have more time alone in the matter of spiritual things. So that you may gain the energy. But don't tell everything to your wife, especially in your spirituality. Why? She might not be converted. She might not be converted. And by telling those secrets of your spiritual strength, showing how you do things spiritually, when you fast, when you study the Bible, everything, you make it clear to her. The devil can go unto her and then know everything about you. Or sometimes she might be converted, but you're telling her, she might be telling other people, other friends of her about your prayer life. How do you pray? How do you do this? And you find that you are giving yourself exposed to the devil and then he's going to attack you to, the weakest, to your weakest point. So I advise you, follow these techniques. The first one was pride or praise. The second one, prosperity and money. The third one, adultery and fornication. The fourth, negligence of prayer. The fifth, being busy, no time for meditation. The sixth, fear, and that's the persecution no matter, and, uh, and other things. Seventh, ignorance, no Bible study. Eighth, idleness. Ninth, social media. Ten, marriages. So my friend, thank you. I, I do beg you, subscribe, like, and share this video to different groups as much as you can to make sure that people, they know these 10 tactics that Satan uses to destroy Christian spirituality. May God bless you as you take time to study. It does have the word of prayer to thank the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you because you have given us the Holy Spirit to, to discern these techniques of the devil. And I do believe, Father, you are going to give us a strength when he comes with those techniques to be able to decipher them, to understand that he is coming and to take the shield of faith and combat him. Father, thank you because you are going to help us. In Jesus' name, amen.